Fighting climate change is not rocket science. Why would I say that? I mean, it's the most pressing issue of our times. Well, when we benchmark climate change, we look at the pre-industrial era, which is 1850 to 1900. Before that time, uh, fossil fuels weren't such a major portion of our life. There was no rocket science, literally. And there was a machine that was built almost 500 years ago, which can fight climate change. You know, it's got two wheels and a handlebar, does string string for the most part. I think you know what I'm talking about. It's the humble bicycle. And that's why. Hi, this is Ripu Dhawan Bevely. In the year 2016, I had resumed cycling and running. Before those years, I had a flourishing career. I would travel three, four, five flights a week, would live out of suitcases, work out of airports, lounges and restaurants, be in multiple cities within the week. I literally had what you call a high flying career. But there was always something amiss. At the same time, my weight for the first time had ticked over 80, 85. I was the unhealthiest ever, especially being a sports person. And I had gone through a hard breakup. Well, breakups are hard always. So it was time for a lot of self-introspection. And uh, I realized over time that I have to do something with my passion for the environment and my country. So when, I, when cycling and running came back into my life, um, anyways, it was hard on the body with my heavy body to, to run. But the thing that was harder was the visuals that I saw of litter, trash and plastic, especially when there are no people and no traffic. That's what you observe the most. So I wanted to do something about it and make this a national movement so that we can make a real impact. But how do you do that? Where do you start? You start at home. You start with yourself. Change begins with you. So that's what we did. Uh, I introduced the cleanup to my running group and very organically it became a run and cleanup uh, movement to start with. Now, the term that most of you are aware of today, blogging, wasn't around at that time. So we conceptualized this, this concept and further added a lot of fitness aspects to it, workouts, uh, and we call it the trash workout today. The kids and teenagers especially love the fitness aspect of it. Over the last few years, the Little Free India movement is a 100 plus city strong movement and uh, it's present in your city as well, Pune. In 2019, a great, a wonderful thing happened when the government of India adopted our mission and since then a crore people have participated and pledged to not litter. Why do we focus on littering? Is because we will never be able to clean up our world by cleaning up. We will have to stop littering. And when you bend down, to pick up somebody else's litter, you will not litter again. So you know the, uh, the tools that we have for climate change are a pair of gloves and trash bags? Now that's no rocket science either. As the ambassador of, uh, of the country, my mandate or responsibility is to take this to every district of the country and that's what we are working towards in the next 24 months. So let's talk about some of the most pressing issues. First being, surprise, surprise, plastics. How can we solve this plastic crisis? So it needs a sea change in mindset from consumerization and instant gratification, which are the biggest contributors to this menace. In India, we generate close to 26,000 tons of plastic waste every day. I don't even know what that means or how much that is, but Almost 40 to 50% of it is uncollected, which means it litters our streets, our parks, where land animals feed on it. It finally gets into sewers, rivers and oceans where the aquatic life feeds on it. So where does it end up at? On our plates. Gets into our system and wrecks havoc into our system. We eat a credit card every week. That's the amount of microplastics in our system today every week. So clearly, plastic is the villain. But let me ask you, who invented plastic? Who manufactures, consumes, uses and throws, litters plastic? Again, the finger points at us. So if we are so responsible for this mess, I'm sure we can do something to undo it. And that's why we created a pledge called the Plastic of Vast Pledge a few years ago, where we motivate people to shun just one single use item from their life because every time we talk about plastic it's so overwhelming because it's everywhere. 
So we say, just shun one single use item from your life and see the kind of change that it makes because uh, the real change will happen when the entire ecosystem, which is primarily made of three players, three major players, the consumers, you and I, the manufacturers, and the, then the policy makers. So while we impact these two levels in the hierarchy, you and I, the consumers, can actually make a change. Simple example, there are two crore or 20 million people in Delhi. Now, each of them say no to single-use plastic bottle just for one day, 24 hours, that's it. Which means two crore or 20 million bottles, single-use bottles, being manufactured but not being consumed. Now, uh, I'm not an economist, but we understand a little bit of demand and supply, right? So if the demand is pushing the manufacturers towards more eco-friendly alternatives, it will create a ripple effect in the, in the long run. The next topic is pollution and transportation. Now, pollution is no longer a Delhi or North India problem. It's a Pan-India problem. Almost all uh, the cities in the top 20 most polluted in the world are from India. My city, Delhi, is the most polluted capital in the world. Something that we shouldn't be proud about, but we should do something about it. And that's why public transportation and more eco-friendly alternatives are something that we need to adopt as quickly as possible. So I spoke about initially about this machine which fights climate change, the humble bicycle. I think that's one thing that we, we need to work towards, especially building a cycling culture in India does not mean just cycling lanes, but actually how to get more and more people to adopt this lifestyle. Earlier this year, we did a mini campaign called the Ride for Change, where I was cycling from Delhi to a nearby city like Indirapuram, Ghaziabad, Dehradun, uh, Palampur, so anywhere between 100 to 500 kilometers away. And the idea was that we will generate zero emissions over during this travel and create zero waste. So. Every city, we would get the locals involved, get them on the saddle, uh, take the pledge, clean up a little bit and do awareness. And during those five weeks before the second wave hit us, cumulatively we had done 26,000 kilometers on the saddle and saved close to eight tons of carbon emissions and picked up or cleaned up close to two tons of waste. Now that's just to show an example how a handful of people can make that switch. So what if we get all our major smart cities to, to be cycle friendly, to have a cycling culture? Now, look at it this way. 50% of uh, trips in India are less than five kilometers. That is uh, our target audience. That is where we need to switch to 100% cycling maybe. And 50% of the households across India also have at least one bicycle. So clearly, the numbers are in our favor. We just need to make that push. Early next year, as India is in its 75th year of independence, I will be cycling 7,500 kilometers across the country, covering about 75 villages and 75 cities, thereby taking our message of, of more sustainable travel across the country in conjunction with Fit India and Swachh Bharat Thereby making, a re, thereby making a big impact into not just the psyche of the people, but also petitioning the government and the authorities to build that cycling culture. The next big breakthrough in transportation are electric vehicles. And it's very important to look at them uh, with a minute eye right now, because if we look at the examples of plastics, in less than half a century, it went from being the greatest invention of our times to the biggest catastrophe of, of our times, primarily because of the waste that we accumulated across the planet. 91% of all plastics ever created are still on this planet, never recycled. Even though we say plastics are mostly recyclable. And that's why when we look at electric vehicles, when we look at the lithium ion batteries, what are we gonna do about their waste? And that's why whenever we design, manufacture or build a new product, think it through till the end where it becomes waste. And what are you going to do about it? How are you going to manage it? How are you going to recycle it so that it's minimal or zero impact on the environment? Look at the figures right now. With 
uh, with electric vehicles being mostly in the developed market, we are seeing recycling percentages of around 5%. Now when that comes to, uh, when this breakthrough happens in developing markets, this will be even lesser in terms of recycling. So what will happen to all that waste, all those lithium ion batteries? How are we going to dispose it of? How are we going to recycle it? How are we going to shore up our recycling capabilities? That's a question that needs to be asked of the manufacturers, of the policy makers, of people who are pushing for this big change. And that's why I say the humble bicycle is still the greatest machine to fight climate change. So as a next step, let's talk about the sustainable choices that we can make every day. I know a lot of young people who are trying to make a difference with their businesses going sustainable route, a lot of startups, uh, sustainable startups out there. It's important that you and I support them in these ventures. How do we do that? Simple example, we all have our staple jeans and t-shirt combo. But have you ever considered the environmental impact of your one t-shirt even though it might be cotton and we think it's sustainable, but how much of an environmental impact does a cotton have? How much water does it consume through the manufacturing process? Does the brand follow fair trade practices, which means uh, the farmers get their due. Those are things that we ought to be aware of. Uh, there are certifications out, of, out there like GOTS, which ensures that a brand is more sustainable, consuming much less of water uh, while growing cotton. Similarly, have you ever been to your local market or mandi for grocery shopping? If not, I would advise definitely try it once so that you know what are seasonal and non-seasonal fruits, what are locally grown versus imported fruits and veggies, and thereby you can make more informed choices. Now let's look at COVID. Now COVID was a huge wake-up call, but at the same time, a great opportunity for humanity to introspect, slow down, and figure out or rethink our relationship with Mother Earth. For the first time, we could actually see our destruction, the destruction that we've created in front of our own eyes because the moment lockdowns were imposed, the moment human activity came to a standstill, the skies just opened up. Beautiful skies and views that we are not used to, especially in North India. Uh, clean air days, AQI was lit right down. How did this all happen? It happened because the human activity completely came to a standstill. So it's that moment or that reflection that should lead us to make more informed choices and actions as to what we can do to reduce our impact because our home is not the four walls of our house, it's the planet Earth. And if the planet is sick, we will never be healthy. And the last lesson that I have is that humanity and sustainability are two sides of the same coin. One cannot exist without the other. Especially in these times when we see wars and conflicts across the world, across our country, when there, who will think about the environment? When there are conflicts, when people are trying to fight each other, win wars, nobody talks about the environment, nobody talks about sustainability, right? So peace is pivotal to a healthy planet. It's only when we learn to coexist with each other. What does humanity tell us? We're all the same. Look at us. We all have two eyes, two ears, one nose, one mouth. When I look at people across the world, I look at, I look at a mirror image. God created us all the same. We've created differences of language, nationalities, race, color, religion, I think we as humanity need to move above all the differences and realize we are all in this together. And finally, we've established how our actions have impacted the environment so I'm sure our actions can also undo some of the damage. Like my t-shirt color suggests, we're not in green, definitely, but let's be hopeful we're not in red also. We are in amber right now, we have the warning signs and we ought to act right now. And you know the biggest power that we have is that there are 8 billion of us. Imagine the cumulative power of the 8 billion. 
we can fight climate change and it's not rocket science.